I've never seen anything like this. Not even when I lived in Witch Country. You lived in Witch Country? I mean, it's a, it's a big island, but how did we never... Meet? You just answered your own question. Hey, you there, watching this video right now, a question for you. Do you personally know every single person from your hometown? Didn't think so. So can we just agree that this show is the Black Plague of dialogue? I lived in the countryside when I was young. We didn't practice new magic like everyone else. So you've always been unique. Can someone please write a single passage that won't make me reach for the bucket? It shouldn't be that hard. Stop waving that thing around. Everyone's stone. It's too <laughs> dangerous. Put it away. That better not have been a real bird. It was decorative. I'll hold you to that. Mom. I will fix this. I'll fix you. They look so... Happy. We have to save them. No matter what it takes. Shut up. Shut up. Everyone just shut the fuck up. Stop spewing this worthless dialogue. Voiceless storytelling is a thing, you know. No shit you must help them. It's all just pure pain. And we are still not done. Who's the triumvirate? Why are they after us? What? Which country's corporate big money guys? The villains of this show are celebrities. They go by their actual title. They allow their underlings to reveal who they are. And do not end their existence for their pathetic bumbling. Kids, would you step outside for a second? Okay, so the heroes are gonna blow the lid on this massive scoop, right? Surely they won't keep this to themselves instead of revealing this insidious threat to the entire world to the teachers. The veteran guardians, whose literal job is to protect the world from evil forces. Why is the triumvirate after us? I know people in which country. I can ask around. No, we don't want to tip them off. We need to find Olive. She came after us and failed. She will come back. Then we should tell the triad what's happening. Or Caraway, at least. We can't. You heard her. The Academy's crawling with spies. If we tell anyone, we'll be overheard. The story would end right here if the girls just did the obvious. The villains have already shown themselves to be incompetent beyond all comprehension, so even the slightest pressure at this point would make all their plans crumble like a house of cards. But we still got three more episodes to fill with absolute retardation, so the obvious is a no-go. It's not even about mulling it over, telling everyone about this would be the gut instinct of any functional human being. Some vague threats about spies and the like is not enough to deter anyone. We hide well, and they'll keep sending us. The others won't be so nice. And that ends up being a lie anyway, so nothing is gained from this narrative intrigue-wise. It's ridiculous. Do you think Caraway is a spy? Do you think the Triad are spies? I would imagine not. Here's an idea. If you are scared of assassins, then tell literally everyone. If everyone knows, then it doesn't matter anymore. The assassins won't try to murder you because they have nothing further to gain. The show suddenly invents this absurd reasoning for why the girls can't ask for help. Even though that has been their modus operandi for the entire series. No excuse for the mutant cat incident. No excuse for the rot. But now there suddenly has to be a reason. What the fuck was Sage trying to accomplish here? 
What possible use could this flashbang spell have? You can shoot lightning, you bewildering, passive-aggressive bitch! Blow Olive's hand clean off! And as for the pussycat herself, she already had her hand on the Terra Sphere. It was literally in her grasp. How did she manage to leave the trinket behind while escaping? Was closing her fist too much for her? Who wrote this? She's gone. Never gonna find her now. Never gonna find her? The fuck you can't! She's still bleeding! Rosemary found her not two minutes ago by following the trail of blood. You see what I mean? The show constantly tries to justify its idiotic plot with these utter bullshit lines. In the hopes that anyone watching it has the mental capabilities of a toddler. Look. I'm not asking for anything unreasonable here. The basic assumption when engaging with any author's story is that I as the audience suspend my disbelief about all the fantastical elements. I allow the author to flex their creative muscle. I open myself up to embrace the tale they have to tell. And in return, the author doesn't treat me like an idiot at every chance they get. That's the silent deal between each author and the audience. You don't try to fuck me, and in return, I won't be so mean to you. It's that simple. Sage! Ugh. I needed to do something! Oh, and that's what you went with. I'm not perfect. Neither are you! Ugh. That's what I've been trying to tell you about myself, who does dumb stuff all the time! Guys, enough. If you are suddenly so self-aware, then perhaps you should work on fixing your character flaws instead of just continuing as the brainlet that you are and hoping things will work out. Admitting problems is not fixing them, nor is it the same as taking responsibility for them. So the villain escapes, the spell gets reversed, the festival continues as if nothing happened, everyone continues being retarded, and I can feel my sanity dwindling each passing minute. I cannot believe I let that girl sleep on my feet. I can't believe how hard you smashed her terrasphere. I can't believe you won't stop simping. Apologies! Nebby must apologies to loud noises! Apologies for from the fourth, Professor Slime. My mission made me break your noises. It's okay, dude. Broken instruments make good new sounds. Wanna try? You're a good cat. I can honestly say that in all my years of consuming storytelling in all its forms, I have never cared so little about anything happening on screen as I do at this very moment. The band's probably gonna start again soon. Sage, do you want to watch them with me? I'm in. We need some space. Actually, uh, never mind. I'd rather throw more money down more holes. I'll come with. No, Rose. I, um, I want to be alone right now. Alone? With Snapdragon? Yes. So Sage and Snap are a couple, I guess. And Rosemary and Sage are BFFs no more. Time to be sad. The world's always but what can I do? Time just won't talk to me. Get those stubby feet moving. Make mama more money. Young Can't we just start over? It might seem strange. But there was okay, so first of all, go dunk your head in acid, you sociopath freaks. What the fuck is this tone? You want me to be sad for Rosemary, right? 
Then why are you stuffing the screen full of this stupid shit? Oh haha, ha. Amaryllis killed a bird for real Z's. Isn't that quirky and funny? No. No, that is actually not quirky and funny. That's awful. You have a problem. Whoever wrote this. And whoever greenlit this. I know a place we can go. Uh-huh. Keep inserting your sexual fantasies into your creative work. That is the best way not to get mocked on the internet. Always nice to know the budget can be stretched to cover topics that truly matter. What makes this world so beautiful? Are the imperfections we all bear? And you, you shut the fuck up, you absolute worthless wailing waste of space. Your voice is like rusty nails shot directly into my eardrums. Your music is crap. You'll never make anything worth listening to. Your existence is a bad joke. People's imperfections make the world beautiful. That is the philosophy of pathetic narcissist losers. How to say you've given up without outright saying it. Here's a counter. What is truly beautiful are the people who work on themselves tirelessly, always aspiring to better themselves and to enrich the lives of those around them, the people who don't hide from their problems or deflect their imperfections, but rather decide to face their demons head on and conquer them, the metamorphosis from a flawed being to something not quite perfect, but still better than what came before, that process is the beauty of life within the grasp of anyone. Or in other words, grow the fuck up! Episodes 8 and 9 are a disaster. Every single problem in the show is escalated. The act of failing is honed into an art form of its own, it's as if the show itself is purposefully trying to find new ways to piss me off. And most of this frustration can be traced back to the lack of a single, simple, yet often ignored basic element of writing, consistency. That is the one thing I've been especially focusing on during this double feature of suckage. Consistency of tone, consistency of world, of themes, of characterization, of motives, everything is broken. The writers are utterly incapable of creating anything worth investment, considering the grandness of this event, and everything it ought to mean for the story that has come before, as well as going forth, the fact that the writers still continue to mess everything up to this magnitude, for my money, makes these the worst episodes yet. Not the worst overall, just the worst so far. And as always, a massive thanks to each of you for listening till the end. The continued support is very much appreciated. And a special thanks goes to all the supporters on Patreon. As well as an extra special thanks to my 10 euro supporters, Wyland, Jesaja Vanderwatt and Six Stars. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out any of my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.